Okay, so as I am approaching 50, I have come to the realization that, that I'm different and that we're all different and that our differences are what makes us unique. And sometimes because we're different, we have to, um, we have to adapt to be able to do the things that we want to do that, um, that everyone else seemingly can do with ease. So, so a perfect example of this for me is, is that uh, because I have a, because I'm visually impaired, I have vision loss in certain areas of my field of vision. And as a result, I don't, I can't play video games very well. And one of my favorite video games is Tetris. And so what does that mean for me? It means that I have learned to adopt the game of Tetris to fit my play style and my abilities. And so, so I play Tetris. I play old school Nintendo Tetris, but I play what's called no rotation Tetris, where the object is more of like a puzzle game to complete as many lines as you can without rotating the pieces here. For the duration of this video, I'll put, I'll put my game, one of my games right here. So you can see what it is while while I continue this discussion. Um, and it's funny because I came about this because I've been a fan of competitive Tetris for a while. Before like the most recent stuff happened with the game being finally broken and, and world records being broken all over the place. Uh, and I came to the understanding pretty quickly that I was never going to be an elite Tetris player because my reflexes are just my hand-eye coordination because of my vision issues is just will just never be what it needs to be to be able to compete at those high levels even with a ton of practice so i was like you know what i can still enjoy the game and i discovered a, sm a small subset of players who play this no rotation tetris and and for me, it kind of exemplifies how I have been subconsciously, unconsciously living my life for the last, I don't know, three or four or five years, where I have this sense that I don't quite fit in with other people my age, other people doing the same things I'm doing, um, those that are outwardly seemingly like me. And that I end up doing things differently, whether that be how I have built my career as a voice talent, whether that ha that being how I parent my kid, um, or how my wife and I and our our kind of outlook on what it means to be a married couple and to spend all this time together and what our big plans are for early retirement and stuff like that. Um, and it struck me today because, because today's Easter and I had a, I had a brunch with my family. It was like my mom and dad and sister and, uh, her husband and, and her kid and my family and, and my uncle was there too. And we all had, we all had a nice conversation, but I came to the realization that they, the way they do things is opposite of the way that I view and do things today. And I might have said this before, in my family I kind of think of my wife and I as the black sheep or the outliers, the people that are doing something different from the norm and trying to make it work because that's what we value over conformity and being conservative and um and yeah it just seems like that's not how we're wired and i don't think i came to that realization until maybe like eight or nine years ago when I was just kind of tired of being in the rat race. I was tired of doing the same things. At that point, my vision had started to change. And that's pretty much when I had to start to make um, 
changes in my life to adapt to to that. And I had a whole bunch of medical issues back then, which made me reevaluate how I was living, what I was doing, how I was taking care of myself, the activities I was partic- participating in, what I was currently doing for work, and what I really wanted to do for work. And because of all that, um, step by step, my wife and I were able to effectively make these changes, and it was by doing things differently. Um, my wife has my wife is a is a therapist, and she uh, she while she saw people in person, she was one of the early adopters of telehealth when the pandemic was first coming around, and it was because of her ability and willingness to make those accommodations and adaptations was she able to build her practice to what it is today. And things like that, I think, come up more often than not in our lives and a lot of people's lives. And I, for a long time, was someone that wanted to play it safe, that wanted to take the, I don't know, more conventional route instead of taking calculated risks and putting myself out there and doing something different. And so, like this channel is a perfect example of that. I've had a bunch of YouTube channels in the past. I've done a bunch of best practices for YouTube. And now I want to make content on a daily basis. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to adapt the way that I make content. I'm going to adapt the way that I talk about things and things that we discuss every day. And that will effectively allow me to to do the things I want to do, be a full-time content creator. And so if you're in a position where you're up against some kind of adversity or challenges, think about out-of-the-box ways that you can adapt to continue to do the things you want to do or to start doing the things that you want to start doing. And so... Maybe, I don't know, maybe by now this game is finished. I don't know, you tell me. Um, But anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and we'll talk again tomorrow.